Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I know that uh, this is probably your last session before happy hour. So thank you very much for being here. So my name is Ramesh Nair, and I'm a product manager on Google Chat. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Mike Remtula, who's also a product manager on Google Chat, and Sean Winter, who is SVP of strategy and customer experience at our partner, Lumaps. So we'll be talking to, to you today about integrating with Google Chat to enable better collaboration for your customers. Google Workspace is where users spend their days communicating and collaborating with um, their colleagues. And so it really makes sense to bring more processes, apps, and tools into the place where people are already communicating or collaborating. The Workspace team is building an open and extensible platform where all developers and IT professionals can bring your services, your business data, and your critical processes all to where users are, are already, and so that customers can get the most value out of all the tools they have. There are over 3 billion Workspace accounts and 10 million paying customer organizations for Workspace. And Google Chat is a great place to start integrating into this large ecosystem. Many enterprises, just some of which are shown here, rely on Google Chat to connect their um, entire workforce. If you tuned into what's new with Google Chat earlier today, you will know that we are making huge investments into making Google Chat an exceptional product with over 40 new features just this year. So it's a great time to build on Google Chat. In this session today, I'll first walk you through our chat app capabilities, including some of the latest updates some of the exciting new chat apps that our partners have built, as well as a little bit about how you can build chat apps and get them distributed to users and customers. Then Mike will talk to you about the new chat APIs. He'll share how we have launched new API features for chat that let you bring many more workflows into chat, including creating new spaces, adding people to those spaces, and many more. Mike will also be speaking with Sean from our partner, Lumaps, about how they've used the APIs today to benefit our shared customers. First, chat apps. Apps are a popular way for users to integrate their favorite tools and services into the communication platform that they, they communicate in. We've been investing heavily in making apps in Google Chat a great way to get work done. Let's start with some basic elements, if you're not familiar. Chat apps can work as a direct message with a user, allowing that one-to-one -one communication or even conversational interface. They work in spaces so that you can have multiplayer interactions with the whole team. They can read chat messages, process events, display cards to show information, and many more things. Apps can also have other interaction capabilities, such as slash commands to allow users to quickly do a command with a few keystrokes, or dialogues where users can enter in more detailed information if they need to. And all these capabilities are available now and already enable great use cases for your users and customers. There's also a significant amount of new capability we've added in the last few months as well. Some of the UI capabilities we've included include the ability to have columns in cards so you can take more input and have more flexibility in displaying information, as demonstrated by the Jira app here. Another highly requested feature is the ability for apps to display information just to a specific user so they can get information that's specific to them or take action, even if they're in a big space with lots of teammates, demonstrated by the Asana app here. 
Finally, apps can have a home page in chat that you can use to show key information, such as ticket updates, bug assignments, or to-do lists, all within chat so users don't have to leave their communication interface just to check on a quick status. There are lots of other improvements coming down the line, so please join our developer preview program to learn about them first. Now that we've covered some of the exciting capabilities that are available and coming soon, I did want to talk a minute about multiple develop options developers have to get started building chat apps. AppSheet is our no-code builder that allows you to get an app up and running with no code using a graphical user interface. With Duet AI for AppSheet, you can even get an app running with a few conversational prompts. Those with a bit more coding experience can use AppScript, our low-code language, and be able to create apps for hundreds of thousands of users, even without uh, your own um, development environment. Finally, for professional developers, HTTP chat apps give you the most flexibility and power, allow you to reuse your existing infrastructure and scale to millions of users. Next, let's go through some examples of partners building great chat apps. I see some of you here today. Thank you for coming. Because it's when you all build these solutions and use cases that the magic happens for our users. We're starting with some collaboration use cases. And a Google team, Looker, have built a great integration with chat that allows you to schedule send reports directly to the right chat spaces and so the right users will be able to see those reports when they're meant to. Next up is collaboration partner Loom, who allow you to bring context-rich async video messages straight into the chat stream so that users can collaborate in a true hybrid fashion across time zones and working hours. These integrations are available now. Next up, Let's look at the customer support use case. We have the team from Zoho who are building an integration with Zoho Desk, their customer support software. This allows you to easily create, assign, and look up Zoho Desk tickets right from Google Chat. Such a great way for customer support agents to collaborate with their teammates and get more done and ultimately help the end customer. The Zoho team is also building an integration with their CRM software, so look for that in the next few weeks. We're also excited about a couple integrations in the human resources use case. So first is UKG, who are building a tool that streamlines workforce management, allowing frontline workers and others to clock in, swap schedules, um, or look at their schedules, all from the mobile device that they may be using, all within chat. Achievers is a great platform that allows users to recognize and celebrate their colleagues. And what better place to celebrate your colleagues than a collaborative environment like Google Chat? These apps are aiming to launch by end of year, and we're very excited for these types of use cases in an environment like Google Chat. Finally, generative AI partner Typeface is integrating a cross workspace, including an app for Google Chat that allows you to generate new content, get feedback, iterate, and accelerate approvals all within a chat space. This type of integration is enabling productivity and creativity in an exciting way, and we're so excited to see this and many others come to Google Chat. We've talked about some of the capabilities, some of the amazing apps that partners have built. Now let's talk about how users can discover the apps you build. One example that you can see here is that apps are now accessible right from the Compose bar so that users can find your apps as they're typing a message to their colleagues. We're adding a new dedicated app section in Google Chat to elevate your apps and bring them into the same stream as 
your DMs, and your spaces with other colleagues. We're excited that these and uh, many other product changes will help elevate and make them even more accessible to users. In terms of opening up our audience, I'm very excited to share a key update that just launched last week, which is that consumer accounts or free gmail.com accounts can also use chat apps right from within Google Chat. This opens up a very large new audience for developers and allows you opportunities to grow your customer base with a very large audience. Workspace admins at organizations are very important stakeholders as well. And as of earlier this year, admins can now install thousands of um, apps on behalf of their users. And so they can install it for an entire organization, particular organizational unit, or even specific groups that they've configured. So this is a great way to get distribution as well. Finally, another exciting update is that chat apps in the next few weeks will be available for everyone to see and install from, from the Google Workspace Marketplace. If you're familiar with the Google Workspace Marketplace, it's a great way to get visibility to your apps. And there are featured categories such as recommended for Google Workspace, and new categories such as emerging apps or intelligent apps. And we're looking forward to featuring some of your apps in our marketplace. So with those updates on capabilities, partner integrations, and discovery and distribution of, of chat apps, I'd now like to pass it on to my colleague, Mike Ramtula, to share more about chat APIs and how you can build even more powerful integrations using the APIs. Thank you. Thanks, Ramesh. And hey, everyone, thanks for joining our session. As I'm sure most of you are aware, the original chat API was very focused on use cases, mimicking those of a support bot. You know, a very popular example would be a help desk bot that users could ask questions to it, and it would simply answer those questions. While this worked really well for that support bot use case, it didn't meet all of the use cases that our workspace developers, our admins, and our end users were asking for. Some of these use cases, including being able to create a chat space programmatically, or even read all of the chat messages in a space to be more conversational with that user. When we started designing the new chat API, we wanted to make sure that we addressed these top use cases and more. Our overarching goal was to make sure that a chat app could do everything that the user could do in the chat web and mobile clients. I'm really excited to announce that we have now launched a complete REST API for chat developers. I'm excited by it, okay. Um, developers now have full access to top-level resources in chat, spaces, memberships, messages, attachments, and reactions. You now have access to do everything, read and write all of that data right within chat. Quick poll to the audience. How many of you watched my Developer Spotlight session in the Google Workspace Developers YouTube channel? Uh, not very many. OK. Well, thank you for watching it. Uh, it looks like my dream of becoming a YouTube influencer is going to be on hold. Uh, but if, for those of you who did watch that YouTube video, this will be very familiar to you. There's a few key use cases that we targeted with supporting these REST APIs. Incident management is one of my favorites, and we've got a demo of that a little bit later on as well. But the mock shows PagerDuty creating a space and adding members to discuss a potential issue. We'll also be featuring incident management later on for those of you who are able to stay and not rush to happy hour. Uh, employee onboarding is another key use case that we wanted to support. Imagine when a new manager joins your organization. In addition to creating their email address, creating a Google group for them, you can now create a chat space for the team members, provision, and add them to all of the relevant chat spaces that they need to be added to even before they've joined. Another very important use case 
when we designed the chat APIs was to support real-time message interoperability with Slack and other enterprise messaging platforms. If your organization uses multiple messaging platforms, you know how hard it is to make sure that all of our users can find and talk to one another. We don't want our users to be on an island. This is a great opportunity to let everyone know that tomorrow I'll be talking with Mio, one of our partners that focuses on enterprise message interoperability, and we'll be announcing a customer that's already in private preview with Mio, interopping chat and Slack together for all of their users. Please make sure you sign up for that. That's in the Showcase Theater tomorrow at 1.45 p.m., I believe. Finally, one of the last use cases that we wanted to support with our new REST APIs was enabling migrations from Slack or other enterprise messaging platforms into chat. And you see very important business data being discussed in chat space. That Slack channel is a knowledge repository, and there's so much important information happening in that channel that when you move some or all of your users into Google Chat, we wanted to make sure that you didn't lose that repository. One of the other partners that I'll be talking with tomorrow at the Showcase Theater will be CloudFuse, who's built a Slack to chat migration tool, and they'll also be announcing a customer that's already started migrating Slack data into Google Chat. We also have a very exciting roadmap for our developers. Ramesh already announced that as of today, gmail.com users and guest access spaces are supported through our REST APIs. That's now available already, and you'll start to see in our demo that we can create external spaces already. We've already launched our migration APIs to developer preview. CloudFuse is already using that and enhancing their migration tool to support Slack channels being migrated to chat spaces. And one of the key things about our migration API is that we maintain historical timestamps. Imagine messages from Slack last year. We wanted to make sure that that timestamp could be persisted into Google Chat so that that conversation is relevant for that time. I'm also excited to announce that in Q3, we'll be launching our events APIs for our chat app developers. We've talked about message interoperability. One of the key needs for an events API is to support real-time message delivery as close to real-time as possible. With this events API, developers will now get notifications on new messages in the space, new members being added to a space, and more. And now I'd like to, like to introduce Sean Winter, SVP of Strategy and Customer Experience at Lumaps. Thank hey, you, Sean. Mike. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, Ramesh. That was great. Um, thank you all for being here. Yes, I know we're, we're between you and happy hour. I'm like officially between you and happy hour now. But you're nearing the end, and that's, a, that's certainly an achievement. Uh, my name is Sean Winter. I'm fortunate enough to work for Lumaps, who has been a Google Workspace partner since 2016. Uh, so we're thrilled to see the developments that are coming from the chat team. We are hugely passionate about intranets. How many of you have an intranet at your company and know what an intranet is? Yay, look at that. We're at the right place. Um, so thank you for having an internet. We'd love to tell you a little bit about how we think about where we're going with these great chat advancements. Sean, for the audience, can you share yes. a brief overview of Lumaps and your overall vision, please? Absolutely. So we are the only recommended uh, internet for Google Workspace. We sit very nicely on top and aggregate all of your company's knowledge management communications in a very consumer-friendly way where your employees can be sure to understand what's going on and be aligned. And the typical challenge with internets is that employees want that stuff in the places where they do work, in the flow of work. So what better story than to start bringing some of that to chat? Oh, I went the wrong way. What's your perspective on the modern knowledge workers' needs? And where do you think platform integrations and partnerships fit into that? Yeah, so as we think about uh, solutions and building solutions, whether it's from a product or business perspective, we think about aligning to different trends out there. There are lots of trends to look at right now. As you know, from the pandemic through to today, we are going through nothing but change. Spoiler alert, that's not going to change in the future. We're going to continue to go through some pretty massive change with everything that's coming. 
But some of the trends that we try to align to and try to help employees uh, make employees' lives easier are the following. So one, the notion of automation on the fly for knowledge workers. We've obviously done a great job with automation for factory workers, for frontline workers. Typically, knowledge workers are still left to work in a very unstructured way. So how can we bring repeatable tasks and experiences to employees where they are in the tools that they like to use? Second is the notion of the emergence of remote and distributed work. We are all probably working through hybrid work scenarios in some way, shape, or form. This is obviously here to stay. It's changed a lot uh, in the past few years. Uh, with that, employees' expectations have changed. Uh, probably during the pandemic, we relied a little too hev heavily on synchronous technology tools. So think your meeting tools, your chat tools, which relied on someone else being at the other end live at that specific time. I work for a global company. My peers are nine hours away, time zone wise. Is that right today? Changes by the day. Um, so asynchronous work is really, really important to us. How can we use chat as typically a synchronous tool to bring asynchronous experiences into chat? The third one is the notion of customer data platforms and employee data layers. So does anyone here know what a customer data platform is? There's these huge databases that gather information about you. So that if Mike and I were having a conversation and there was a, uh, a voice-enabled AI device nearby, suddenly I open my phone to a social network and maybe I'll see an ad for the thing that we're talking about and you say, whoa, that is scary. The fact of the matter is enterprises have an amazing amount of data on how their workers like to work. It's an incredibly awesome and potentially powerful thing. What if we use that to drive experiences? Because we know, for instance, that maybe Mike loves to live in chat all day. I love to live in Gmail. Ramesh loves to live in Meet. What if we brought that together really elegantly through some middle layers so that those experiences all match together? And then finally, most importantly, uh, we work a lot with our analyst friends on the nature of human-centric work design, bigger than ever given that AI is coming to the party, uh, if you haven't noticed today. Uh, and it's coming to the party in very, very interesting ways. How do we ensure that we, as technology providers, provide tech that is inherently human, inherently empathetic, inherently elegant, so that people actually not just, not just need to use it, but want to use it to make their work lives better? A couple more quick questions. Yes, sir. Why did you decide to build an integration with Google Chat, and what does your integration do? Yeah, so a few quick use cases up here to highlight. So the first one is the notion of employees wanting to work when, where, and how they want to work. You'll probably hear me say that 10 different ways in the next 10 minutes, but this is something that we really believe in. And you'll see from this example here, the notion of taking content that may exist in your internet in Lumaps and being able to share that directly to a space in chat, to a person in chat on the fly. So this is something, and we're going to continue to build this out over time to have more experiences like this. But again, how can we take all the wonderful content, communications that we have in Lumaps, and bring them to employees in the flow of work? Second one is this notion of, especially this, this really hit, if you've seen a lot of HR studies during the pandemic, the notion of employees craving connection, especially in a hybrid work model and social capital. So let's say I come across an interesting article about Mental Health Awareness Month at my company and my intranet, and I immediately want to actually connect with the person that is passionate about that, that wrote that. They may be on the different side of the world, right? But we allow for direct integration with Google Chat to say, here's the author of this. I would love to have a conversation. Oh, and look, this person's online. Let me chat with them now. And then the third, and this is the most challenging one, is typically communications, whether they come through email, whether they come through some form of intranet, whether they come through any variety of mechanisms, they really need to stand out today more than ever. Right? So how can, in chat, how can we deliver elegant, beautiful, designed communications that are scheduled in time? So again, back to my example about Mental Health Awareness Month, what if I need a certain message to go out Monday, another one Tuesday, and I just want to set that all up before the month and say that these I want to go to chat, these I want to go to Gmail, these I want to go on the intranet, or all of the above. So we've enabled that as well as a great way, again, to bring communications to chat where people are. Can you share with the audience what is next in your roadmap for Lumaps? Yeah, so we are very actively working uh, on this. And I am thrilled to say that the Lumaps for 
Google Chat app will be launching imminently. We're dealing with a few time zone challenges, but it should be up in the next few hours. Yes, yes, thumbs up from our head of engineering. Uh, so we're super excited about that, but we are gonna continue building this out. Again, we passionately believe in how do we bring all of the content and communications that we provide in the flow of work. So the notion of tighter integration between chat spaces and Loom app spaces is something where we think there's a lot of play between synchronous work and chat, asynchronous work and Loom apps. Uh, Gen AI is something we get a ton of questions about, whether it's around content creation and question answering and digital assistance, or a lot of our customers say, you know what, can you use AI to do the boring parts of my job that I don't wanna do anymore? Content cleanup, content targeting, content moving, those types of things. Uh, and then finally, Loom Apps is a great, uh, a great system for organizing around virtual events. So let's say I wanna plan a town hall, that requires work to be done before, that requires the actual town hall with Q&A and materials during, and then for posterity's sake, the, art, the, um, the hosting of that long term, right, which influence search and other things. So we're working now on an integration directly with Meet so that Loom Apps can be the frame with all the materials and then Meet can actually be the town hall. And finally, we love your smart chips, so we try to bring those everywhere that we can. So I really appreciate it. You all have been a great partner. We're thrilled to be here. And I know, I think you're gonna demo now? Yeah, let's do right? it. All right, Mike, Hope. let me pass it back to you. There you go. Thank you so Fine. much. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, as Sean mentioned, let's put everything that we've talked about today and let's build a chat app. Let's go back to that favorite use case of mine, incident management. And why I like this use case is because it combines so many of the visual elements in a chat app and the programmatic access of our chat APIs. So let's see how a fictional customer service team uses the Google Chat API to streamline their incident management workflow. Our chat app, like the PagerDuty one, will be monitoring a third-party service to ensure that the service is meeting its SLO commitments to its customers and its users. If the service is down, we'll create a chat space, we'll add the incident management on-call team, like SRE, support, eng, product managers. We'll also add some messages to highlight some of the investigations that the chat app has done to save time for those incident management members that were added to that space. They can already see the history of what's happened and what the chat app has been able to accomplish. Finally, we'll export all of those messages into a Google Doc for a postmodem tracking. For our demo, we're gonna simulate the outage of a service by using a page to indicate that something's happened. All right. Once the issue's been detected, our chat app will create a new space for tracking. Um, one thing I do wanna highlight, sorry, two things I wanna highlight, actually. When I was writing this slide, You'll see here that these are just code snippets. They're not the full code that you need to create a chat space. And the second thing that I wanted to highlight is I did not enjoy typing URL fetch so much. So if you're familiar with AppScript, one of the things that we are now looking into is building an AppScript advanced service for chat to make it much easier to use chat commands right within AppScript. In order to quickly start our troubleshooting, our chat app will add new members to the space. For our example, We'll just add some static members. For homework, yes, I am giving you homework. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to look up the appropriate on-call members using Google Calendar. Sean, that includes you. You've got some homework here. I'm ready. All right. I need more. <laughs> Our chat app will also add some messages to the space to inform members of what troubleshooting the chat app has been able to do. Ramesh talked about slash commands. So let's add a slash command that the members can use once the incident has been resolved. We'll quickly invoke a slash command to close out the incident. Finally, we'll use the Google Docs API to create a Google Doc for postmortem tracking, and we'll generate a summary of the incident as it happened. Pretty straightforward, right? Let's look at some of the building blocks and prerequisites that we had to use to get this chat app to work. Our first step is to create a Google Cloud project and enable the following APIs. And don't worry about writing down these steps. We'll have a link to where we've already posted this on our developer's site. One of the other things that you'll notice is if you use our tutorial on the Google developer's page, we've also included Vertex AI 
to generate a summary of the conversation in the postmortem doc. Now we'll make our app as an internal only app for OAuth verification. We'll add the necessary Google Chat scopes for creating a space, adding members, and creating messages. A Little bit more homework for you, if you're really interested, make it an external app and publish it to the Google Workspace Marketplace. We'll create our app script, connect it to the GCP project, and you'll see that I've just got a generic error message to on, uh, sorry, We've ha we'll have the app return a text message on an event to make sure it's working as it's expected. Once we've deployed the app script, let's configure the chat app itself. And this is the chat API configuration page in Google Cloud. We have to configure the app name, the avatar, a description of the app, and then we'll make sure that the enable interactive features is selected. This way, your app can receive one-on-one -on -one messages or be added to a space. Our connection settings will point to the app script project that we've just created. It's pretty easy to add a slash command, so we'll add a slash command that the users will be able to use to close out the incident. Finally, let's add all of the code for our app. Now, so that you don't have to watch me type, I did have a video, but thanks to our tech experts, Noah and Alex, Instead of watching a video, we're gonna try this live. So wish me luck. If we can jump to the computer, please. Okay, so if you remember, I was going to use a page to simulate an incident happening. I'm going to add Ramesh as an incident manager. So him and I can talk about an incident that has happened. All right, here we go. And our chat app created a space. Awesome. We'll open that space and Ramesh and I can communicate to talk about what's happened with the incident. And you can see here that I've already got some messages in there. Crossing my fingers. Ramesh and I are conversing about what's going on. Thanks, Ramesh, that was really helpful. <laughs> Do you have any more actual suggestions? And of course, it's gonna be my fault because I pushed a code change to prod. Let's assume that was the reason for the incident. I'm gonna close that incident. We'll pull up our slash command. <laughs> I heard a few people get it. <laughs> so we'll close out the incident. And if you notice, we've generated a Google Doc. I'm just gonna open up that Google Doc. And one thing that our demo that's featured on the Google Workspace developer site, we've also incorporated Vertex AI to generate a summary of the conversation. And it did pretty well. If I read this, it did really well. It called me an engineer. Awesome. <laughs> um, okay, 
And Ramesh says it looks like they'll miss happy hour. That's pretty impressive. Um, okay, oops. I did not strip out the slash commands, but I'll leave that as an exercise to you. And if we could switch back to the slides, please. That was from last night, so thank you for your support. I know we've covered a lot today, but we've really just touched the surface of what you can do with workflows in Workspace and Google Chat with our new chat APIs and chat apps. We have a number of great resources on our Workspace developers page. Please visit our developer docs to access examples, code labs, and yes, even the demo that we built today is now live on the developers page. Please also make sure that you sign up for the Workspace Developer Preview Program to stay in the loop when new features are announced and to access all of our APIs. And one last thing, for those of you who have not watched my Developer Spotlight on the YouTube channel, which is pretty much everyone, uh, please make sure you do watch it and give it a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, so that we can actually offer more uh, Developer Spotlights. And there are some interesting links about what's next uh, for next. Please make sure Ramesh and I will be at the Innovators Hive tomorrow. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to come visit us at the booth. We've actually got a few more, question, a few more minutes for questions. So if you do have a question, please come up to the microphone and ask. Sean, Ramesh, and I will still be around afterwards as well. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>